Today I'm going to go over conditionals and namely the if then statement. So if a condition is true, you're going to, you're going to execute code. If a condition is false, then you're going to skip over it. That's why they call it conditionals because the condition has to be met. I added four parts to the world based on the size and shape of the part. I changed the material and color. I thought that would be a pretty good application. So I got some diamond plate here, a grass ball, red, red brick and yellow brick. Cool beans. Let's go ahead and get a fresh world and get started on our conditionals. All right, so I got a base plate here with nothing in it. I'm going to go ahead and add a part, part, and I'll add a block, right? There we go. Maybe make it a little bigger. All right, this is going to be my wall, right? That's my wall. I want the green. Can't get it. There we go. There's a green. All right, let's add a script to that. Hit the plus sign, script, and then we'll call this conditionals all right because conditions must be met so let's start off with a really basic if statement right if then that's the main conditional in roblox we'll say if true then print uh what should i write if statement one executed cool so the if must have a true condition in order to run. Well, true is the most basic of true conditions, the word true in Roblox, this will run. Oh, let's open up our output window. Can't see the output. Go to view, output window. There we go. If statement one executed, right? So we ran our if statement. Cool. Let's take a look at some other conditions, simple ones, right? We'll do a couple simple ones first. So if true works, false obviously wouldn't let's make this two right true has to be or the condition has to be true in order to run false is never going to be true it's false right let's go ahead and copy this and make another if statement we'll call this three and this time we're going to see that true and false is a binary condition. If it's not one, then it's obviously the other one. Intuitively, that makes sense, right? If it's not true, it's false. If it's not false, it's true. So if we go and run this, this should, this should uh, execute because it's true. This should execute because it's not false, which is true. Right, so you can see how this starts building. There we go, we got one and three. So when you're in computer science in college, these are going to get huge, right? And then they're going to go over something called De Morgan's Laws, which is a, a Boolean logic. These are called Booleans. True and false is Boolean because of someone named George Boole who actually came up with the type of logic and, uh, and worked it pretty hard. So that's cool, but you're like, man, if it's true, I just write the code. I don't need to write true if statement. That's extra, extra lines. So let's put a variable in here. Say local value equals three. And we'll assume that this variable is being changed somehow just to make it interesting. Well, this doesn't have to be the word true. It just has to be a condition that's met that will evaluate to true or false. So if I say value equals equals three, this double equals is a comparison. Single equals is assignment. So here we're making value equal to three. We're assigning three to value. Here we're comparing, we're saying, hey, is value three? And it actually is, right? Because we just did it right here. If I do this, is value two, it's not, right? So that's false. This is true, that's false. All right, and then with this kind of, with this kind of theme, with the not false, we could do, paste that, Value equals two, uh, two is false, not false is true. Ooh, that should execute. So once again, one is going to execute, three is going to execute, right? And if you're not getting all this, that's all right, because we're going to do this over and over in different videos, right? In real world situations. So one executed, three executed, like we predicted. All right. Um, what else can we do? Well, there we can we can actually append more conditions and the overall thing has to be true or false so if i say if value equals equals two or value equals equals three 
Well, or means one of these has to be true, right? So this is false or, well, this is true. The whole thing is true. Boom. Now we got all three, right? So what's the opposite of or? <laughs> and, not really opposite, right? But what's the other thing? We have ors and ands. And means they both have to be true. This is bad code because value cannot be two and three based on the, the data type, right? So this will never execute. Value will never be two and three at the same time. You just have to be careful of that. The or is fine. All right, cool, but let's go ahead and start getting some shapes on some parts and then maybe adding some, some logic to your game. All right, so if I have local part equals script.parent, I have a variable called part for my part. That's the script, that's the parent part, that's the variable holding my part. All right, I'll get rid of this stuff here. We don't need it. We actually don't need this because we're going to be changing the world. We're not going to be printing. Uh, you could have it there for errors, though. In fact, I recommend it if you think you might make an error. All right. So what? We got an if statement. Whoops. What happened there? Let's click on this. If part, we have this thing called shape in part, right? So if we look at our part, we go down here, this property, we got a property called shape. Just be advised. Wedge does not have it. So we can only do the blocks, the spheres, and the cylinders. Another little caveat down here, they call it ball, block, and cylinder. If we go to the base plate, home, let's take a look at the part. It's called block sphere. And wedge doesn't have a shape. That's a little bit different. So we'll skip that. And cylinder. So that somebody called it sphere here. Somebody called it a ball here. You just got to keep that in mind. Obviously, two different programmers and Roblox never fixed it. All right. So shape. Let's take a look at. Let's look at look at the shape data type. If I go to type it, it's going to give me this IntelliSense shape is enum dot part type. Right. That's the type of data it wants. Can't call it like a five or something. We're going to do comparison, and we're going to look at that enum dot part type. And we'll do block, right? We made it a block. Then go ahead and change the material. Let's look at material, right? So I go back like this because the IntelliSense will pop up if I'm not quite finished. Uh, material is enum.material. So enum is short for enumeration. It just means a big listing of different types, right? Roblox gives that to you. It's pretty handy. It puts just about everything in the enum if you don't know where it's at. So that's where you start, enum. So the material, enum.material, we'll make that, what is that, a block? We're gonna do it, we're gonna do brick. You're gonna see a lot of stuff here that material, it won't work on a part because some of it's for terrain, but they just put it all here in the material. So if you don't know what it is, if you don't know if you can use it or not, go to your part, go to material, you could use all of these, all right, cool. And brick is one of them. All right, so we have our brick. Let's go ahead and do a color. We'll do brick color. Brick color, data type is brick color. So if we add brick color, we need a brick color data type. I'll do red, right? Notice how this is a function and this is just a property. That's just how they decided to do the brick color. They decided to return the value as a function instead of a property. So don't let that throw you off too much. I wish they would have been a little more consistent with that. All right, so we have our part. Let's go ahead and check to see if it works. We should have a red brick wall. And we do, cool. All right, now let's make the, this script a little smarter. Let's say we're gonna put it on a spawner and then we don't know what the shape is. So I'm gonna do a control, I did a control C to copy, control V to paste. We could get a ball, remember it's ball on this side, not sphere. And the ball will be grass. There's a grass. There we go. Grass is obviously green. There's a green. Cool. Let's do one for cylinder. Control C. Boom. Part type. Cylinder. Nice. We'll make that diamond plate. We'll make this gray. Gray. Cool. 
All right, now let's go to our world, All right? And we'll make a part for the sphere. We'll make a part for the cylinder. Should we make this a little bigger for us? Scale it up, out. Make it like a pipe. There we go. Maybe make a sphere bigger too. Move that over. All right. And now let's put this conditional scripts on conditional script on these other parts and see if they pick up a difference in condition. I'm going to do a control D to duplicate, control D to duplicate. I want to drag these to my parts. There we go. I'm going to play. Voila. Look at that. We have our diamond plate, gray. We have our green grass ball, and then we have a red wall. So I'm going to do one more, one more condition. Right, we're going to do that and thing, right? Remember when we put two things together and they both have to be true with and? <clears throat> Make sure collisions are off. Click on your wall, right? Control D. Pull this out, right? I'm going to make this like a road. I shall scale this down. I'm going to stretch this out. So we want this on the X. I'm going to say I want it more than 25 on the X, right? So I'm going to check to see if it's 25 studs long. And that's going to be the other condition I'm going to add. If it's more than 25 studs, then I'll make it uh, like yellow, like a yellow brick road, right? Now, when we go to modify that script, we can't have all these scripts floating around. We're going to get confused. Let's go ahead and delete three out of the four. And then just modify this one. Then we'll just re reduplicate. All right. So we have our block. And the block, we make it red brick. Now we want to check on size, namely the X component. I just picked that arbitrarily. So I'll say, if shape is block and part size X is, let's say, less than 25 studs, should I make that smaller? You can still see that, right? Then we'll be red brick. And then let's copy this, control C. <clears throat> if it is greater than or equal to 25, we will make it yellow brick. There we go, yellow brick. All right. So this greater than equal sign in math class, you did the you did the greater than sign, you put the line underneath it. We don't have that on our keyboard, so this operator takes that place. It's the greater than and equal than sign, greater than or equal to sign. Obviously, the less than and equals to is this way. All right, so cool. Let's try that. Let's see if we get a yellow brick road. Now, remember we deleted our other scripts. Let's go ahead and click on this. Duplicate, control D, control D, control D. Put them on the other parts. And yes, there is much more efficient ways of doing this, but at this point in our learning, that's gonna work, right? Let's go ahead and hit the plus or the play. Look at that, yellow brick road. All right, let's go over the ELSIF real quick. So what's the ELSIF? Now, if we look at our conditions, let's delete these because we're going to change scripts again. I'm going to delete these. Boom. Let's look at our conditionals. And we put this on a part. Every single one of these if statements has to fire to check to see the part type. Not too bad like this, but maybe this isn't a loop that's running every frame. Maybe you don't want that many comparisons, right? So we can make this all one block. If we get rid of that if to end, did you see what I did there? Yeah, I'll undo it. There we go. I'm going to get rid of this end. I'm going to get rid of this if by copying all, or by highlighting that, hitting the delete key, and then I'm going to type in else if. All right, so if that else if, then there's no space here. Let's go ahead and chain this one. Let's highlight that. Hit the delete key, else if. All right, and then let's get this, highlight all that, hit the delete key, else if, right? You can just do backspaces if you can't highlight it, that's fine. Now, 
If this is true, whatever is true, once it's met, once that condition is met, you're going to leave this block of code. You don't have to check every single one of them unless it's, this is the only one that's true. If none of them are true, everything is checked, but nothing happens, right? And then there's an else to it. I'll cover that in other videos. I'm going to keep adding to this. So if you don't get it right away, don't worry. Now, because this is evaluated first, and if it's true, we're going to leave the code. It doesn't really make sense to check to see if this condition needs to be met. Because if we have a block, it's less than 25 studs. This is going to execute. We're going to leave the code block. But if it's greater than 25, greater than or equal to 25 studs, this is going to be false. We're going to come down here. All we really have to do then is check to see if it's a block. Boom, block. So we should get the same thing, right? But more efficiently, once something's met, the code is executed. We don't have to do every single if statement. Let's do a control D three more, three times to duplicate. Add it, and we should get the exact same results. Nice, we do. Let's look at the view for errors, output window, no errors. Looking good, you got a little bit of intelligence in your game. So when you make a spawner, now you can start making decisions on things. Cool beans. All right, I will see you in the next video. We will keep on working at Roblox Programming Basics.